Hi and welcome to another edition of winemastery.co. This is episode 11 and this is a special part, an additional part, part 4. And what we're just going to touch on here is if you like Merlot, if you try Merlot and you like Merlot, what other sort of red wines are you likely to like? So I have absolutely no idea, so I'm going to pass you over to the expert. I like it when you call me the expert. Do you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough though. Okay. Right, um, yeah. I mean, hopefully we'll do this with, with, with most of the wines, because that's the, that, it's the, what we're trying to do is help you find, obviously, the wine, the wine that you're going to like. And I know people are a bit dubious about trying uh, d different things, because um, we all get we all get stuck in the thing where you find a wine that you really, really enjoy, yeah. and so you tend to buy safe. it. Like, yeah, yeah, it is safe. You don't waste your money. And you no, and that's it. And, you, and sometimes, of course, you know, you want, if you're looking at it and thinking, you know, will I pay that tenner for that one if I've got this here? So, I mean, if, if there's a particular wine you fancy, we can obviously work out from there, you know, what, what you, what you do like or what you won't like from from the wines you do. I mean, obviously in the shop here, and um, we're face to face with the customers, and it's always nice to uh, talk to the customer. That you can find out a lot about their wine drinking and, and and what they do like or what we think they will like from there. And we are usually pretty good at, at such a thing. Now, however, on the video we we can't quite get that across no. unless you guys want to send us you know some questions in. That'd be really good. Um, so for your Merlot, yeah, now, as, as we were saying through this last episode, um, uh, episode 11, is um, the Merlot does tend to be quite earthy with a little bit of fruit in there, and we've mentioned the plumminess quite a lot, uh, but if you look back over the tasting, we've mentioned a few bits and pieces in there, which just tend to be quite rich, and I, I've definitely found the kind of leather flavour in, in a couple of them, and that chocolatey richness, um, again, so one thing, if, if you are liking a Merlot, then you're probably looking at something, well, depending on what you want from there, I mean, a Rioja, it tends to be a nice, um, a nice substitute because the, the, the Rioja has that kind of earthiness and that, and that, um, the, the leather that's in there, and also quite smooth on the finish, which we found with all, all three of these Merlots this evening. We found very, very soft and easy going. And um, what you find with not not just Rioja, but Spanish wines in general, uh, they do tend to have to a good bit of aging on, and you don't pay a massive amount for that aging, which is really good. So you get good value for money, um, and they tend to be very because they've got the aging on there, they get the very, very soft, nice and easy on the on. The finish so that might be one way for you to lead towards and the aging is that the aging in the barrel rather than in the bottle or both okay both you can do both right. um, I mean in the barrel it's kind of pulling the flavors uh, from the barrel uh, as such and also maturing and softening out a bit and then once it's in the bottle it is mature a wee bit slower but the the tannins or that dry edge which which is there uh, in there as it lays in the bottle it kind of slowly softens out and then becomes imparts more into the flavors um, so yeah, Rioja is a nice one to go for, but what I always say about Rioja is it, it has very little fruit in there, it lends it very little fruit. So, you could go from, from so Merlot. If it hasn't got fruit, what has it got? What, what does it...? I always describe, you, for me, um, it, it's almost typical um, leather, oak, tobacco. Okay. That, that are the three main flavors for me. And on, and on the nose there, you, it's so obvious as a Rioja, it's, it's just there. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that that'd be nice if if you want to stick on the same one. But as I said, the Melo, uh, sorry, the Rioja doesn't have the fruit in there. So if you were looking for something that had that kind of um, um, the fruity side, the of bit Merlot. fruit and, and and the weightiness, I probably lean it towards more a Cabernet Sauvignon that's got a little bit of aging on there. But the Cab Sav does tend to be more fruit driven as well. So okay. You, so, but the, also the Cabernet Sauvignon can can be quite tannic. There's quite a lot of tannins in there, unless you have got one which has got a bit of aging in. So if if you if you like Merlot and you're going to Cab Sav as, as yeah. to try that. Is there any particular, you talk like, do the Americans, are the Americans better, sort of similar to Merlot or Australians or? You're probably closest, yeah, probably closest is going to be the American ones, yeah. Yeah, because, yeah California. you've got that weight, yeah, the Californians, because they do have more, more weight about them. Um, like, with, with, let's say, the Australians, I always describe them as jammy, and they, and they are, you can you almost kind of lick your lips after you've finished, but re, real kind of fruit driven, which which is what the, the Cab Sav grape is anyway. Um, but for, for that weightiness of, of, which you get from the male, or I'd lean in more kind of, yeah, yeah the Californian. Okay. Cab Sav. So can I go Cab Sav for uh, Rioja, obviously, is, it, uh, is there anything else that they, they should try? Mm. Or is that really sort of on that, that, will, that will, from, from there, you, could, you you move on to those and then we'd see from there. Okay. Um, because I'm thinking like Shiraz can just be a bit too spicy, a bit too tannic, and a bit too heavy. Yeah. Um, a big black currency flavors, which the Merlot isn't. It's a nice introduction or set, but you need you would then need to find out the lighter Shirazes before you get up into the big. But you know, depending on what you're buying or where you're buying it from. Yeah, we tried Shiraz in episode ten, so take a look at those uh, if you want to if you want to try some. Okay, well that's uh, summarized Merlot as. As John said, uh, we'll be trying to summarise the, the others and to, just to guide you into what other wines to try to, uh, uh, to, to, to try out and uh, 
we'll take it from there. And again, come back to us, give us your ideas about what you'd like us to cover. Indeed. Yeah, it'd be really nice to have some questions from you guys. So until the next episode, we're episode 12, where we're going to look at Pinot Grigio. Pinot Grigio. Which actually was our most popular, apart from uh, the one I laugh in, it was our most popular. <laughs> Why does that not surprise me? <laughs> episode. So. All right. So there might be a lot of people looking at the Pinot yeah. Grigio. Okay, okay, well, I'll get something special then. Champagne's coming up very quickly from the last episode. Is it? It seems to be the one out of the two. Yeah, everyone obviously recognises that. And, mm. yeah, okay. Very interesting. Yeah. Good. We'll see you in the next one. Chin chin. Chin chin. <laughs>